it originally formed in 2014. It was originally a partnership between the American Red Cross, British Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, and HUNT, the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. Um, Missing Maps was originally formed to strategically map the world's vulnerable communities. And as we all know, hosting events to remotely trace an open street map and use the data for humanitarian purposes has been a concept for a while now. Um, for example, this picture was taken at the American Red Cross headquarters in 2012 at a mapathon, about two years before the partnership was formed. But back then, we were all doing this on our own. So what we realized in 2014 is that doing this together really creates magic. It lets us amplify each other's voices, share our resources, and piggyback on each other's work. And doing this, we're able to reach millions. So how do we organize? Missing Maps is a three-step process. First, volunteers trace satellite imagery and open street map to create what we kind of consider the black and white face of the map. And while you can do this on your own, people often gather together to do this. And these events are called mapathons, map hours, map afternoons, anything with a map pun we will accept. And step two is when local color gets added to the map through field work. This is when people with local knowledge add their data to the map. Step three is the action step, and that's when we use the data we produce in our work. So during our first year, we focused on working out the kinks of running a mapathon, building our fieldwork and partnership framework, and during this phase, we really focused on mapping small-scale projects. During year two, we focused on scaling up with both our projects and our partnerships, and we hit some of our first big goals. Um, one of our biggest accomplishments in step two of the American Red Cross was the West Af Africa Mapping Hub project, where we visited about 7,000 communities um, in a 15 kilometer buffer zone between Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea. And to make this happen, we developed some amazing tools like Possum, the portable server that lets us run a complete mapping package without a connection to the internet. Uh, we also hit our first goal of mapping 200 million people ahead of schedule. So we're about to have our third birthday. Thanks for being here with us. And ever since that first year, we've really grown at astronomical rates, which has let us introduce tens of thousands to OpenStreetMap. Um, we're now a group of 15 global NGOs with a handful of data partners like Facebook and the World Bank. Most recently, uh, the Canadian Red Cross and the IFRC joined us this summer. So in our third year, Mapathons are really picking up at a crazy rate. At this time last year, we had worked with about 12,000 map volunteer mappers, and we've now worked with about 40,000 mappers. So adding almost 30,000 new mappers to the system in a year isn't always easy, but what we've been able to accomplish has been truly amazing. And while Missing Maps aims to pre preventatively map vulnerable communities, um, this network of volunteers is really trained and ready to assist when we need maps made for our response work. Having this group at the ready allows us to assist HOT with their activations. Over the last three-ish weeks, we've had thousands of people who are able to help out with the Puerto Rico mapping, for example, and we think we'll be done with the building footprint this weekend, um, which is really amazing. And a lot of these volunteers are coming to us through their jobs. So we've really made some great moves with our corporate social responsibility um, in that world. So we can now be found at Microsoft, Accenture, J.P. Morgan Chase, Amazon, Cisco, and others. Um, that being said, a big thank you to our OSM community for giving us a safe-ish space to let these new mappers really develop their skills and, and learn how to map in the system. Uh, at a time like this, being able to rely on the community has been incredibly beneficial. And you never know where these volunteers are going to take their skills or spread the OSM gospel. So I want to highlight one of our biggest achievements of the year. And through organized tracing events, HOT has coordinated a truly amazing feat to assist with malaria elimination. Um, malaria is preventable and curable, and without transmission, will cease to exist. So in order to effectively carry out intervention campaigns, HOT has been asked to help identify and map populated places in some of the most susceptible parts of the world. And six, since late 2016, almost 6,000 mappers have added 4.7 million buildings to OSM. And this data has been used by numerous organizations around the world uh, to help directly plan their activities, including planning indoor spraying campaigns. This campaign makes up about 30% of all the buildings added to the map through the Missing Maps framework. Uh, we've also expanded our tools this year um, We've expanded the tools that fall under the Missing Maps umbrella this year. 
So if year one, we developed Open Map Kit. Year two, we focused on Possum. This year, we're really focusing on the Open Drone, open map, open drone map, which is embedded within Possum. Um, we just completed a mission documenting the Red Cross-sponsored shelters in a community in the Philippines, and we hope to do more work soon in rapidly urbanizing communities in Haiti. In year three, we've also continued with the large-scale nature of our project and worked to increase functionality, which lowers the barrier to entry to using the tools. Um, for tools like Possum, we've created documentation that focuses on easy setup um, and troubleshooting. And because of this, Possums are being used outside of the humanitarian context, and you can find them being used increasingly uh, more by researchers and in academia. Our validation tools are also a really great example of a transferable resource to the wider OSM community. You can find these directly on the Missing Maps website, and we're also more and more often hosting validation-only events in communities. So by increasing the usability of our tools, we've been able to introduce OSM to more of our humanitarian partners outside of the mapping community and directly scale up our mapping while keeping our initiatives locally based. To prepare for a measles vaccination campaign in Malawi, we finished 58 tasks and added a million buildings to the map. And because measles vaccination rates need to hit 95% for herd immunity to work, we partnered with the Malawi National Government and the Measles and Rubella Partnership to assist with their vaccination campaign to vaccinate 8 million children in only a week. So before the project, we also partnered with Facebook to help us understand population settlements, uh, settlement patterns so we can better focus our campaign and ongoing work in the area. Overall, we've added 15.5 million buildings to OSM in just three short years. And our, at our average mapathon, a new mapper is mapping between 30 and 40 buildings an hour. Um, but when they're a bit more familiar with some of the concepts behind it, they're mapping about 100 buildings per hour. Um, which brings me to our next slide. We are slowly being found more and more in the education setting, and we're starting them younger. So um, on the left, we see an example from a Belgian geography textbook that mentions missing maps. And on the right, we see a fifth grader at a mapathon in London. Um, or in England, and that's actually geography royalty. That's Jon Snow's descendant, the Jon Snow, the cool one. So we're really making great strides in the education sector as well. And mapping at a local scale really adds up, and we're really excited to announce the creation of our microsites page. Um, these will be country f pages that feature, that are on the Missing Maps website. Um, they'll highlight current projects, number of people who've mapped in the country, and top hashtags. So these will update weekly, and they'll give mappers a comprehensive look at the scope of our work in that country. Um, each page will have contact information for local mapping groups, and we're just starting to roll these out. So if you'd like to help shape this resource or be listed as one of the contacts for a country, please let us know and help us shape the resource. So in just three short years, we've had to stop counting how many individual public mapathons we had because we lost track at about 1,000. Um, we've hosted events in 65 different countries, and together we've put about 60 million people on the map. Um, we've eaten about ten th tens of thousands of slices of pizza, and GeoWeek 2017 hasn't even happened yet. So this year is shaping up to be one of our biggest years for GeoWeek. You might have seen a lot of media come out this week. Um, we're hoping to have 200 events in just one week. Uh, last year, we had 140 in 60 countries, so help us reach that 200 goal by participating this year. So our original goal was to put two, 20, million people on the, 20 million people on the map, and we actually already reached that goal. So our new goal is to map 200 million by 2021, which is our fifth birthday. So in summary, we know our own communities best. We know what makes us happy and what makes us feel vulnerable. And what we're trying to do with the project is expand the group of people who get to join us in deciding how their communities are represented to the world. So when we combine our efforts, we can, we can accomplish anything, and I can't wait to see where the next three years takes us. We're taking a picture. There we go. Uh, so map today, and also join OSMF. Mikkel is somewhere, Dale is somewhere. Talk to them. You, maybe you've heard that already today, but you should really do it. Um, so thank you. Thanks for having me.